Poland is passing a law that will effectively make the Polish judges choose between violating EU laws or disobeying the Polish constitution. Now, as you can imagine, the EU is pretty upset about all of this. They say that this is breaking the contract that Poland signed when they entered the EU. But from reading all of these stories, you kind of get a sense that the EU is much more angry about beginning to lose control to decide what Poland does within their own country. Welcome to the channel, guys. My name is Soren. So the EU is now slapping sanctions on Poland, fining them 1 million euros every single day that this law is in effect. And if Poland stands their ground, which it looks like they will, this will be 365 million euros in fines every single year. So you can see why the relationship between Poland and the EU is quickly deteriorating, generating a lot of talks about pole exit and whether or not it's happening. And that wouldn't be a good thing. It wouldn't be a good thing if Poland ends up getting kicked out of the EU. We'll get into that in just a few moments. But before we do, let's take a look at the news right here. Poll exit. Will Poland's nuclear strike on EU's legal order lead to the country quitting the bloc, quitting the EU? In a decision that sent shockwaves through Europe, Poland's constitutional court on Thursday ruled the country's laws had supremacy over those of the European Union. The long-awaited ruling says some parts of the EU treaties and court rulings go against Poland's highest laws. And commenting on the laws, Lauren Pegg, a professor of European law at Middlesex University, compared the ruling to a nuclear strike on the EU legal order. That's how significant he says this is. Take a look at this. As soon as the judgment is going to be published, Polish judges are going to have to choose between violating EU laws or disobeying the constitution, the Polish constitution. So if they do not violate EU laws because they have a duty to apply EU rule of law standards under the treaties, then they are going to face disciplinary proceedings and possibly also criminal proceedings in Poland. So that leads us to the obvious question, which this article also asks right here. The EU has never seen a member state's judicial system defy so openly the foundations of the bloc. So what kind of ramifications will the Polish ruling have in practice? Uh, this article doesn't go into it, but as, as I mentioned in the beginning, the EU is already beginning to fine Poland 1 million euros every single day, as reported by DW, this uh, German newspaper. It also talks specifically like about what's going on here. And I think it's interesting to point out. So check this out. It says that the top EU court imposed a penalty as Poland has not suspended the disciplinary chamber of its Supreme Court, which critics say allows for the dismissal of judges on political grounds. The uh, European Court of Justice had ruled in July that the chamber does not guarantee judicial impartiality and ordered that it be suspended. So the, on the surface, the EU is saying that we want to make sure that all of these judges are not removed uh, based on what president is in office so that one, uh, when, when a new president comes into office, you can't just fire all of these judges because of political views, right? So that's on the surface of it. Poland is saying that this goes against our our like highest laws. This is how we do things in our country. We're, we're entitled to, we have dem a democracy. Our leaders are democratically elected. These laws are, are um, keeping the Polish laws. So that's where the whole fight is. But of course, it doesn't end here because the EU is already talking about how they want to throw additional sanctions on Poland to make them submit for Poland to bend the knee to the EU, which is slightly terrifying when you think about the fact that Poland is still a member nation of the EU, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Look at this. Other EU nations have insisted that Poland not be allowed to collect EU subsidies while disregarding the bloc's principles. So I went on Reddit and asked a bunch of uh, people from Poland. So keep in mind, this is mostly young people from Poland. And they all said pretty much that they are they are in favor of staying within the EU because the EU does give Poland a lot of subsidies. They, they do hand out a lot of money to Poland to help them out in a lot of different ways. 
And they recognized that if they left the EU, they would suffer financially, uh, hugely as well. So the problem here is when the EU begins to take away the, the reasons for Poland to be within the EU, the, the financial reasons, then will Poland still be fine with giving up all of this sovereignty if now the EU is beginning to sanction them on top of it? Like if the money that they get out of it is beginning to equalize itself because of all of the sanctions, so in the end they don't really get as much as they had hoped for, then are the Polish people still willing to submit to the EU to give up as much of its sovereignty as, as they are right now? And that's the whole problem here, that it could end up forcing Poland out of the EU. The truth is that many politicians within the EU have long looked for a reason to get rid of nations like Poland and Hungary because they are, in their eyes, less progressive. Poland and Hungary are politically more conservative and traditional, and it doesn't go well with the people who want uniformity within the EU. And, and I always thought that was weird, and this is the reason why I don't want Poland and Hungary uh, as a consequence after to leave the EU, because I don't want uniformity. I want difference of opinion, right? I want diversity, and diversity doesn't mean that everyone thinks the same. It actually means the opposite. It means that there's room for people to not think the way that the majority does. I remember just a few months ago when the EU sent a politician to Poland and declared the whole country an LGBT freedom zone. And, and it was weird at the time because the EU wasn't uh, saying that, the, that Poland were breaking any kind of laws or violating any human rights or anything. They just essentially wanted them to think exactly like all of the other nations. But that's the problem right there. That you, you need, to, if, if we're supposed to have a successful European Union, you need to give room for opinions that are not your own. You can't, this whole idea of go woke or go broke, it, it, you, you can't forcefully make everyone submit and then declare how you're all for a democracy right after. It doesn't work. And obviously all of these Polish people thought it was really weird that some guy comes from the outside and it's not like you're violating any laws. It's just because, you know, some people, some politicians in Brussels thought that your nation is not woke enough. So now you need to be a freedom zone, like having a, a foreign politician come into your country, stand on a stage with reporters there. I'll show you the article as well. And just declare your whole nation a freedom zone. Is is LGBT freedom zone? Is so weird, especially when the debate is taking place within your own country. At that point, sovereign nations should be allowed to have debates on whatever they want. It's not about the LGBT issue. It's about member nations having their own rights to to talk about issues, finding their own ways. You don't, especially when it don't come to when it doesn't come to laws. Don't send someone in to, to tell a nation how to think. And especially don't send a foreigner. It, would, you, would you like it if the EU sent a foreigner on any issue to your country? He would go up on stage, the live TV would be on, you would see him on the television, and he would be telling the rest of the world that, that your nation is now this or that. No one likes that, right? Poland didn't like it. Hungary didn't like it when they did it when they when the EU did it to them either. Like no one does this. I I I keep thinking about uh, you know this saying like go woke or go broke. You you can't just force Poland into submission this way. You have to let them find their own way. Uh, let them do their own thing. Don't don't be this suppressive force that can't tolerate other kinds of views. I think technically the EU has a right to do some of these things they do to Poland. But what I don't like is what's going on behind the scenes that you get a sense from reading all of these news stories over the months that they just want to push out Poland because they think differently, because they aren't progressive enough. They aren't left enough on the political scale, right? And since when did, did being progressive mean being intolerant? To idea. I thought you were supposed to be open and inclusive and, and all of those things. 
but they're doing the opposite. You can't allow them to push out Poland. And then I promise you, if Poland gets pushed out, Hungary will as well. You can't allow it to happen. You can't allow these weasel politicians to grab power and then see that they can execute all of their crazy ideas. Because then once they have that power, it probably won't end there. They probably probably will purge the EU of all of the ideas they don't like one by one. Today it's this thing, but tomorrow they might be coming after you. Let me know what you think by commenting in the comment section below. Is it likely? Is it not? Am I overestimating how likely I think it is? Well, thanks for watching, guys. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.